test, 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 test. Test, test, good. Good morning. My name is Brian Curtis. I'm the acting director in the Office of Marine Safety at the National Transportation Safety Board. And I'm here to talk to you today about the uh, successful recovery of the Yale Faro's Voyage Data Recorder, or VDR, and additionally some information about the on, uh, ongoing processes for the investigation thereafter. First of all, before we get started, on behalf of the NTSB, I'd like to thank several organizations that assisted us over the last 10 months in these three missions to successfully recover the VDR. Those are the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, the Military Sea Lift Command, National Science Foundation, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, University of Rhode Island, our technical partners in the investigation, and of course, the captain and crew on the Apache. The third mission, final mission, was uh, begun a week ago out of Little Creek, Virginia, on the Apache. They left last Friday at uh, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and they transited to the site, and they arrived at the site Monday morning, this past Monday morning, the 8th, at about 10 o'clock, and they immediately went to work with their remote operated vehicle, getting it to the bottom. And throughout the day, they worked and were successful in locating, uh, freeing the VDR of its, of its uh, fastening to the mast and bring it safely to the deck. And about 10, 10.30 last, this past Monday night, it was actually on the deck and uh, safely contained. The VDR was then placed in uh, a fresh water bath to protect it from any electronics from corrosion. At that time, we did do some assembly on board uh, of the VDR to essentially do a, just a visual, visual examination. We did not access the data to make sure it was uh, just check on the condition uh, generally. The VDR module, which is in this box beside me, was just moments ago uh, moved from the storage on the vessel in, into this uh, case, and immediately upon the the culmination of this briefing, we'll get back on the airplane and we'll be transiting back to our research and engineering labs, uh, headqu NTSB headquarters in DC, where we'll turn it over to our highly and skilled and experienced uh, technicians and engineers in the lab to both work on the access and pro processing of the data on the VDR. And we expect to be back in the lab uh, roughly 5 o'clock this afternoon. I can tell you today, uh, I can't tell you today how long it will take to access and do the processing work. There are several variables that we'll have to look into back in the lab, those of which was the, was the VDR damaged, was the VDR working properly, if, if there is good data on the VDR audibly, how many hours it might contain, and as well, finally, that uh, the quality of the audio and uh, as far as whether we have to do any filtering to isolate the background noise of, from the uh, sea state, uh, sea conditions. As the situation becomes clearer, as we get back and start the processing, we'll, we'll uh, give you a better update of our timeline for the transcription of the VDR. And uh, that will probably occur in about two weeks. We'll give you a uh, more clear and concise update on the processing timeline. It uh, will be some time before we can share the data on the VDR with you, just due to the processing. And it will be even longer before we can share how the information on the VDR, uh, what it gives us for circumstances of the accident, and how it may contribute to probable cause. Before I take any questions, I'd just like to say that uh, this case 
demonstrates the innovation and dedication of, of all those at the NTSB and all those partners that assist when we conduct these investigations to uh, find the facts and tell why the accident happened in hopes of preventing this from recurring uh, again. We owe it to those who perished, to the families and loved ones, to learn all we can from this tragedy to prevent uh, accidents like this from taking more lives. At this point, uh, I'd be glad to take some questions. Mr. Ryan Curtis, Curtis Larry Channel Channel here, in Jacksonville. here in Jacksonville. Will the families be allowed to view or hear the data? If, if there are data on this BDR, would the families be allowed to hear that data, hear that information, and find out what's on here? No. By, by our statutes, uh, no one will be listening to that outside the agency personnel requ required to. So they, in fact, will not be listening to the actual audio. That is at any time. There's nothing that would make you release any of this data at any point in time. Nothing that would release the audio file. With the transcription, once it's transcribed, will eventually make its way to the public docket. Do you believe that the family should be able to hear how their loved ones perish on this ship from the information for closure? Well, that's that's a right. As I said, it's in statute, and uh, I can't really comment on beyond that. What is that statute? What does that statute say? Just that it, it won't be released publicly, and you can uh, I can put you in contact and get more information on that. Mr. Mr. Curtis, you told me last Friday when we spoke that thorough investigations could be done without this VDR. But how much more does this benefit you guys to know exactly what happened? I think certainly anytime you have the uh, VDR, it's, it's a huge benefit, but we do conduct many investigations where we don't get a VDR back, but obviously if you've got uh, audio files and navigational data on there, then it's, it can only be a benefit to the investigation. Mr. Curtis, Stephanie Brown with WOKB, you said there was a visual kind of quick inspection that was done, so to speak. From your experience as an accident investigator, visually, how does this look? Well, I, I was not on board, keep in mind. Uh, it was just, uh, it was in no way to access the files themselves. It was just a visual examination of the condition uh, of the VDR, the, but there was no accessing of the files. Did the salvage crew give you any indication of any noticeable damage from the visual? Just visual, it didn't show any damage, but that doesn't re mean much because really what we're interested in what's inside and uh, whether we can access the files. What are you hoping to find on, on this information that's in this, this suitcase? Well, it, it would contain two things. First of all, navigational data of uh, inputs from the GPS, the radar, uh, maybe uh, possibly anemometer. Not sure what was input, but it would supply some uh, navigational data. Additionally, it uh, is required to contain at least 12 hours of audio on the bridge, and that's it may contain more depending on the memory size, but certainly uh, uh, that investigatively that would be an asset to know uh, what was going on on the bridge and the conversations they had. Are Will you the optimistic? Folks from, Are you optimistic that you're going to be able to recover some of this? Uh, well, as I said, that's really we've we've got the BDR, which is a huge step. We got it. We have it in the lab. I really can't comment on the the possibilities. Or we're optimistic it's there, but once again, until we actually look at it, I really couldn't uh, give you a concrete answer to that. Will the folks from Tote be able to listen to the audio that's on here? They will be in involved in the audio session, and we uh, have a, a, certainly a set of protocols that we follow to make sure we uh, know who's, uh, whose voices you may hear and the likes of that. So, yes, they will be involved. When will the transcript be released? Uh, as I said, once, once we get the access and processing, then we can give you a better idea down the road when the, all the transcription, when it will be done, and how it will be processed in a time frame. But I really can't speak to that right now. It depends on all the complexity they talk about. Is the VDR damaged? Uh, how many hours are on it? Do we have to do some isolation uh, filtering? So uh, basically, in a couple weeks, we can get you uh, clear answers on the timeline. Well, sir, what do you we know that it's been about 10 months since the ship went down. Is there something that could have happened in 10 months that would have made a difference if we'd been able to recover the device and say, the first month? Well, uh, the biggest thing is we get it back, and they, the, the VDRs are this VDR is designed for to be in 20 up to 20,000 feet of water. So uh, we're optimistic that we'll get uh, data off of it. But once again, we have to wait and see uh, once we open and access and process it. So one of the things we learned from the public hearings that have taken place is that the beacon battery on the uh, VDR may not have been functioning at the time it went down. But if it had been working, if we found it on day one, we'd still get the same information. 
Yes, but even then, if the beacon had been working, it's still you have to find the beacon, get close enough to it. So I would hesitate to go there. We're we're just. Uh, we're glad to see that we've got the VDR, and now we have the opportunity now to open these uh, data files and see what's in there. Mr. Curtis, Chips, the Whirly Jacksonville Business Journal. Is there any precedent where a, a VDR has been recovered from a depth of 15,000 feet and audio has been retrieved from it before? Uh, first of all, it's 15,000 feet. Yes. And, uh, and, and certainly in NTSB, we, we've never done that before. We have, uh, acquired a BDR at depths like that, uh, or even at, I don't believe we've recovered one that I recall uh, underwater. So this was certainly a, a challenge from location and just the sheer depth. Yes, sir. We had uh, planned if we weren't going to take any chances if we were to, uh, able to locate the VDR. We did locate it, and at the time we had to have different equipment on board because we had to extricate it uh, from the mast uh, fastening point. So at that point we had, we had planned a third mission, and that way we can regroup, get the appropriate tools, the appropriate folks out there. We, we had to make sure we uh, were very cautious in, in getting this back once we located it. Do you believe there will be changes made in the maritime industry due to what happened so far? Well, certainly we'll we'll uh, do a thorough, comprehensive report, and once that's done, we'll we'll we're still collecting 